Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So the next part that I would be teaching you, as I told you previously, was uh, the Evil Grade tutorial in which I would be going ahead and injecting my virus inside the softwares uh, or software updates, so that any person who goes ahead and installs the updates, then uh, I will be easily be able to go ahead and access their computer, and it will be forever until unless the uh, updates are specifically uninstalled. So, uh, but before that, I need to go ahead and teach you the MITM attack that is man in the middle attack because without that, you won't be able to understand them perfectly. And for that, for that, for you to understand, I yesterday showed you about the ARP spoofing or poisoning or the ARP cache poisoning, which is almost the same. And the uh, ARP spoofing is already a part of ARP poisoning. So there's not a, bit, a difference uh, much between the two. But if you are looking at it through this tutorial today. That I will assume that you have at least the basic fundamentals of TCP IP. You need to know what domain name systems are, the DNS servers, how they work, at least the basic fundamentals of TCP IP and the CCNA or networking. And to, you should know how they work and how the SMTP protocol and the UDP datagram protocol works exactly. Use the datagram protocol. So, if you know all of these, then you can go ahead and come back to this tutorial and it will be quite easy for you to understand. And even if you don't know about all of these fundamentals, then you can just go on the web, search about them a bit. This is the important parts like the TCP, IP, UDP, SMTP, HTTP and all these things. And once you have uh, the basics of all these things, you can easily go ahead and read that for about 2-3 to three hours for different parts and you will have the basics, trust me. And those basics are enough for you to understand what DNS spoofing is. So once you know exactly how did this works, then you can slowly go ahead and come back to this tutorial and take a look at this. So if you know and if you already know what the basic fundamentals are, then let me tell you one thing. Uh, there are two different things uh, for DNS hacking. That is one is DNS spoofing and another one is DNS poisoning. So if you go ahead and check on the Wikipedia, Wikipedia will say that DNS spoofing is the same as DNS poisoning. But it is not. Because uh, despite what Wikipedia may say, they are not the same. Roughly speaking, DNS cache poisoning is one way to do, do DNS spoofing, but there are other ways to do it as well. And DNS spoofing uh, refers to the broad category of attacks that spoof DNS records. Uh, it is uh, a category of attack and an end goal of the attack rather than a particular attack mechanism. So it's an attack in whole, not any part of an attack. And there are many different ways to do DNS spoofing such as compromising a DNS server, mounting a DNS, uh, you can say as let's say for example, mounting a DNS cache poisoning attack such as the Kaminsky attack uh, against a vulnerable server from Cal Linux, or mount a man in the middle attack if you can get access to the network and guess a sequence of number maybe uh, making by making many requests or be a false base station and lie about the DNS server to use and probably many more. So. DNS cache poisoning is one way to do DNS spoofing. DNS cache poisoning refers to the following scenarios such as many end users use the same DNS cache and an attacker may manage to inject a forged DNS entry into that cache memory. For example, many ISP uh, providers will run caching DNS server and arrange for their customers, the end users, to all to let's say to try the IP's uh, IP ISP's server first and then they, and then later on connect to the actual internet. So if an attacker can find some way to get the to get to the caching DNS server to cache an incorrect record, then the attacker is set. He has managed to successfully spoof the DNS records and affect all the end users who rely upon this cache memory. So how does an attacker manage to poison a DNS cache? Well, one common way is to mount some DNS spoofing attack on the DNS request from the cache to the ultimate DNS server. And as you can see uh, how you, it works exactly, it's given over here. This is the user. It's a DNS server which I and this is the internet and I would be using the internet to get to your DNS server and I will cache it and these are the two internet services which uh, we will go ahead and provide but uh, the actual way of connecting would be it will go and search the internet and let's say it will ask for google.com but it will redirect itself to me uh, because I would be posing as google.com then the DNS cache DNS server will go ahead and cache it in its memory and whenever the uh, user tries to go ahead and get, try to get any information he will connect to the DNS server it will transfer it back to me and since I need to provide something to the user uh, so that he, uh, he uh, does not become suspicious, I will go ahead and re redirect the traffic to the google.com. So whatever the traffic is going on in between will go through me and not directly. So I will have all uh, the uh, time in the world to do whatever I want and the person will not even know that. 
So, how does the ma uh, attacker manage to poison the DNS cache? This will get a little recursive right now because basically you use any DNS spoofing attack get the cache to accept a spoofed record. Here you can use any DNS spoofing attack that you can and afterwards the result is that the cache will uh, cache the bogus record and consequently many end users will now accept that spoofed record too. So that's how the DNS uh, cache, uh, that's the difference between the DNS poisoning and the DNS spoofing. Now let's back, get back to our main topic that would be the DNS spoofing and how exactly it works. So in the first tutorials of series I taught you about the normal AIP communication and how the AIP cache of a device can be poisoned in order to redirect machines, network traffic through another machine and possible malicious intent. This seemingly advanced MITM attack or man in the middle attack or known as ARP cache poisoning is done easily with the right software. In these in the previous tutorial I had I discussed with you a type of attack like the ARP cache poisoning and ARP DNS spoofing, DNS spoofing is almost the same. If you have not read uh, my previous tutorial then you need to go I would recommend you to do so that now because as this tutorial will go on building you will need the basics and ARP uh, poisoning or knowing how it works it's very important for you to understand DNS poisoning as well. So DNS spoofing is a man in the middle attack used to supply false DNS information to the host so that when they attempt to browse let's say for example www. let's say bank of america or bank of india.com there is no such thing as bank of india but still I just took a random name or let's say bank of america.com at the IP address uh, 192.168.2.23 something like that they are actually sent to a fake www.bankofamerica.com residing at the IP address which is totally different which an attacker has created in order to steal the online banking credentials and account information from unsuspecting users and this is actually done quite easily and we will see how it works exactly and how it is done and finally how to defend against this kind of attack and I will also go and uh, teach you how the normal DNS communication works so that uh, you need to know the basics of how the domain system works and how they can be uh, uh, like you can say as a serious threat if not taken care of properly and there's more than one way to go ahead and do these kinds of DNS spoofing you can have multiple tutorials or you don't even need some time the proper software you can just if you have sufficient network information you can still do that and I will be using uh, the technique over here called as DNS ID spoofing and every DNS query that would be sent down over the network will contain a uniquely generated identification number uh, for the purpose of its identity queries and nothing else only. So I will complete this process by doing one or two steps with a single tool and we will see the ARP cache poison and how it works and the goal of this scenario will be to get the users on the network and the depiction of this attack I will be showing you in exact images right now. So but uh, that would be in the next tutorial and that's it for this tutorial guys. So now since you have the basics, uh, just let's go, go ahead and check how it works exactly.